<laughs> What's up, homies? Welcome back to another episode of the uh. Invincible Podcast. This is Heroes Reforged, and we are incredibly excited because today we've got a very special episode. This is our first ever tie-in comic book series, our tie-in to the Invincible Universe, a comic book that I had never read before. Augustine, you've never read it before. No, this is my first time. So all three of us are coming into this fresh as a daisy's ass, mm, and we are so excited. <laughs> I'm because finally not a virgin. It's great. Finally not. All three of us are in an orgy yeah. of comics right now. We're <laughs> the same orgy. Oh, Hector, are you okay? You can All call cherries us popped. The cherry popping daddies. We're talking about Brit from <laughs> the same writer Robert Kirkman oh. and artist Tony Moore, who people may know from the first six issues of The Walking Dead. Mm. Tony Moore is considered the co-creator of The Walking Dead as well because he worked on that first thing there. But there is Brit. Augustine's holding it up. Mm -hmm, uh, this mm -hmm. is volume one, Old Soldier. And um, this was a very, very interesting read. This happened uh, a little bit earlier than Invincible and then kind of caught up. So, so Robert Kirkman did like... Uh, a sort of a, a, a mega-sized issue. This only has like three issues in it, mm -hmm. yeah. but they're yeah. larger than a regular comic book issue size. So he did one that came out before Invincible, I think. And then as the series went on, kind of crossed it over and sort of connected it with Invincible. And I did not plan this at all. I was telling the guys beforehand, I did not plan this at all. Because I've been told, hey, you're supposed to read Brit Volume 1 before you even start Invincible. That's yeah. what I've been told. We, we even had somebody, right. I think, send us a list that was from like yeah. a wiki page that yeah. referenced yeah. all these things yeah. that we should have yeah. been Yo. reading before. And we're like, well, we already messed up the order, but... <laughs> the internet <laughs> lied because uh -huh. this book actually references oh. events that happened in Invincible Volume 4, Head mm -hmm. of the Class. So this is actually the most perfect time for us to read this book. And I'm yeah. so stoked about this. So I want to jump in. And for the first time ever, I'm not going to ask Adam first his thoughts. I'm going to ask <laughs> Augustine. What did you think oh, of this book, man. dude? Oh, man. Well, this was actually... So looking at this cover, I judged a book by its cover. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what am I going to learn about this old guy? Like, what is this guy really going to bring to the table? That was very ageist of me uh, because I came in not expecting a lot, but... I was actually kind of blown away by how how easy it was to read and how how quickly I got sucked into the story. Uh, I did like the very first villain that came up, Mastermind, who was uh, having a dance party in his honor to uh, celebrate his release from jail. Uh, but I think overall, we will see him again in Invincible. It, unless he looked I'm mistaken. very familiar. I think we will see him again. So it's pretty cool that we got yeah, to meet yeah. him here. So Adam, we're going to yeah. see Mastermind again, who can control people. Let's and go, baby. Was, that was gnarly. Yeah. That was gnarly. But so overall, I was, I, overall, I was really blown away, and I really liked how they tied it into the Invincible world. Overall, it really gave a lot of context as to what 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 a lot of <laughs> things were. Specifically, with a character named Donald, we didn't know something very important about Donald. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, and <laughs> right, was that a shocker? Uh, Bro. So we, we find something very important about Donald, and um, we also find out we put into context that whole global. Uh, alien invasion that kind of changed yep. the whole planet as, at a specific point. Overall, yep. though, I'm really glad I read it. Very happy this tie-in came in when it did because all that stuff is very fresh in my head. And uh, when I think about Invincible, a lot of the stuff is jumbled up. Yeah. But now that I'm reading it this way with all, with this tie-in specifically, it works really well, and I'm glad it interjected when it did. You make me very happy, Augustine. You yeah. made this man very, very happy. And I uh, and and let me finish it off. Thank you, Hector. No, thank hey, you for, thank, thank you. you for being a completionist. Thank, me, thank Adam. <laughs> I love being a completionist when it pays off. And fortunately, yeah. I think this one paid off. I, I yeah, feel like my overall thoughts are very similar. Out of everything we've read so far, out of all these trades, this one is my least favorite because I love Invincible. And in some ways, it doesn't quite kind of stack up to that to what Robert Kirkman's doing in that series, but this is a little mm -hmm. bit different. It's a little bit more rough and raw around the edges and kind of fun and funny. And I am still excited that what we learn about this character, everything from who he marries and has a kid with to what his real name is and what his sort of backstory is a little bit, I think it's just going to further enhance when we see him pop up in Invincible going forward. That's what it's all about. That, that's yeah, all I wanted, yeah. and that's what I got. So that's what I'm stoked about because. Well, now yeah. I know that Brit's a badass. Yeah, you know absolutely. he's an absolute. <laughs> he's a badass who straps nuclear bombs to his chest because he knows he's gonna be fine. Adam, yeah. I really want to know what you thought of this. Yeah, man, you just read it. 
Yeah. I absolutely loved it. It was <laughs> yeah. so good. You did? I I really did. And I think like I know that the that the book the main book is obviously called Invincible and it's about Invincible and it's about his family, his life, the world around him, directly around him. Yeah. But I think the thing that was nice about kind of pausing from Invincible, yep, was to learn more about the world outside of Invincible's world. And I've appreciated being on the inside of his world this whole entire time. But I think like what this does is it just gives more context to the greater world and other characters that inhabit that world. You know, it's almost like in some ways, you know, you look like a character like Donald and you're like, well, in the Avengers, he was just Agent Coulson. Right. And then he got a freaking show, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And I feel like we did the same thing for Donald here where it was like, He's kind a of a bit. background character a little bit, and you know we yep. get we get scenes and certain panels with him. But now we like got to understand who he was and what happened to him in his life, and shocking revelations. And you're like, dude, this is crazy. He's, he's an android. He's an android. Yeah, I think we could talk about it. Yeah, he's, he's an android. And, android. And, and I feel like, and I, again, I don't know because we haven't gone there yet. I don't know if Invincible will like the con- the main comic book will like deal with that or talk about mm-hmm. that or we'll get into it. But let me say this. I already did mm. know, and Augustine can back me up on this, mm. that Donald was an android because at one point it that is talked about in Invincible. Mm. But this is the this is canonically the first time it was revealed. <laughs> and yeah. at some point, Invincible, just like with a lot of other things, he's gonna kind of play catch up. He, like there's yeah. gonna be like kind of a throwaway, like, wait, you're an android? Like that kind of mm. a thing. But go on, Adam. Yes. Well, continue. and I just love the fact that this comic book, you know, gives that whole it's it's got more weight than just being like uh, then a throwaway line of, oh, you're an android? Okay, whatever. Story moves on. This, like, gets a little deeper into it, and you g- understand, like, why he is an android and how it affected his family and his life and all that stuff. So just for that one character, I was like, great. For yeah. Brit, it's kind of the same thing. And I we love to do this thing where we pair up music with our comic books. Yeah. And I was like, I have no clue like what to really pair with this. So just a shot in the dark, I was like, you know what? I'm going to put on Captain America Civil War. Mm-hmm. And I got some like, it really made the experience of reading the book super, super, <laughs> super fun. And that's cool. And I, again, it was just like another way of just like sucking me into the world. And even though we had Brit in the last volume, like very much like kind of throwaway stuff, I love the fact that we get this whole expansion of like his yeah. life. You know, what he did outside of his regular day job, uh, his family, and, you know, just like the fun, quippy stuff of like, oh, you have a basement in this house? Why does this have a basement? Like, just all that sort of <laughs> Every stuff. Every place he goes to has a yes. basement. Yes, and I love that. Basement. I just yeah. love that world building. World building, yeah. world building, yeah. world building. And the villains that that he encounters in this is like, some could totally cross over into the main book. And I love having a little bit of more context about that. Uh, yeah, there's just so much stuff. But overall, I love the book. I love the character. I love understanding more of the world. And the yeah. fact that like Invincible was in one panel, yeah, I didn't feel like frame. it took anything away from reading the main book. It no. added so much more context. And I, I love that and I appreciate yeah. that from this book. Yeah. The whole time I was reading it, they were mentioning the Guardians of the Globe. And I was like, where in the timeline are they talking about the yeah. old Guardians? Yeah. But then sure enough, Invincible and like Robot and, yep. and Monster Girl show up. I'm like, no, that's the new Guardians of the Globe. So that's yeah. already this is already sort of post, post Omni Man and yeah. his revelation. Um, love that Brit's real name is Brittany. Yes. That yeah, is that's great. And I love that his father in law <laughs> or no, no, it was Donald. It was Donald. It was Donald yeah, who brings Donald. up like, isn't yeah. that a girl's name? Oh, um, uh, oh uh, my parents um, didn't think so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Never mind. Apologies, apologies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um uh, I also think that some I think that the book starts sillier, and then by the end of it, I think Robert Kirkman kind of smooths it out and he's like, yeah. no, 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 this will fit in the invincible tone because the book is yes. it starts very silly, wacky, yes. funny. Funnier right. than it is being badass, and which at ends, the same time is like yeah. crazy because the villain that he faces is like using yeah. human bodies gnarly. as like trajectory, you know, like as weapons. Yes. And you're like, dude, this is like gnarly yeah. and bloody. At the yeah. same time, yeah. it is kind of quirky and silly. It is, but right. you're right. right. I think by the end of the book, you're like emotionally invested into all of yes. these characters. He he quits, and he you know it's a great like last page where he's like the epilogue leave, is leave. so good. It's a real it's probably it's like maybe my favorite part of the entire book is just this few page epilogue where he goes the last thing is you have to boot me out Augustine leave me the <laughs> alone 
<laughs> and it's this great classic, like MacGruber, like you know, like like listen, I'm off the grid, but if you yeah. really need me, again, like Captain America: you know Civil War, you know where yeah. to find me. You know how to, you know my number. You can call me. Yeah. Like classic bad guy or bad yeah. bad dude macho stuff. But yeah. and I love it too because invested. I think it like it it makes the stakes feel real. And as silly as Invincible, the comic book, like it's a superhero comic book, right? Yes. So yes. there's always going to be stakes that are always like fantastical. But regardless of that, this still has that groundedness that makes you appreciate mm -hmm. the fact that even though it starts one way, it escalates into something else and then becomes something else because you're like, shit, I really feel for this character, for mm -hmm. the situation. And for the things that he's gone through and the things that he's put other people through. And I understand his guilt and why he, I just like, I, mm -hmm. the book really helps. It really like is a full package and it's not just sprinkling little things at you to be like, oh, that's a cool character. I'll probably never yeah. read this again. If I were like, I would totally tell people like, you got to read this. Yeah, I agree. I, I feel like this is actually essential reading. And I feel like it's essential reading because we get a reveal for a character that stops the alien invasion. Bro. Right. So I don't know if you guys are watching this this podcast or listening to this podcast. A couple episodes ago, we asked Adam, who was that flying figure in the sky that stopped the alien invasion? I wasn't even close. Now, and what do we find out here? It's Kid Fusion. Kid, Kid Fusion. Fusion. I did and not then, even make that connection until <laughs> right before we started filming this, you guys. Yep. I'm so stupid. Yep. It's Kid <laughs> It's Kid Fusion. Hector, Glad you because... hyped it up like it was going to be like Omni-Man or something. And I was like, bro, oh, is it? Is it not? I don't know. <laughs> full disclosure, I thought it was Omni-Man. I, I misremembered. <laughs> I thought it was. But it's Kid Fusion. It's Kid Fusion coming back from the sun, sent there by his mother to uh, regenerate powers like Superman. Yep. Yeah. Very much so. Really uh, sad. It, like that subplot it was very sad absolutely it was tragic it was <laughs> thanks hector you're welcome <laughs> so that's uh, the frame that would yeah. be the frame after invincible they they're like why is everybody stopping that's what you would show afterwards mm -hmm. so i think in in three major ways this tied into the main invincible plot line seamlessly and mm -hmm. and like we've been saying before this i think is essential reading because this gives so much context to all the extra things that we know Kirkman has such a world built out already mm -hmm. that this just adds so much more to it. Wait, which one are we looking at now, Hector? What uh, are we looking this at This one right here, is, oh, it feels like it's pretty much that same panel from Invincible from another point of view. Oh, I see. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. It really, really looks like that. But mm -hmm. I agree, man. Um, oh, yeah. the other thing we have to talk about, uh, Cecil choking out a bitch. Like, come on. Um, Yo. Cecil Stedman, Yo. Cecil Stedman has Cecil a dark Suss. streak. He comes in with that snarl on his face and he's just like you've made my life tough i finally got you and then chokes him out and then that's it that's all we get to see from him mm -hmm. but that's that little bit of edge that you don't get from the invincible main storyline because right now he's playing the real nice guy the guy who right. just plays around with teleportation technology because he can the guy who's being real nice to mark at this point Adam, does this give you any suspicions whatsoever for Cecil? I mean, that's, that was the line? thing with Cecil because, like, the way I kind of like, to me, he's like the equivalent of like a Nick Fury in the Marvel Universe. Totally. And with totally. Nick Fury, even though we know at the end of the day, because we have the comic book history, like, he is going to be an ally to the Avengers. With Cecil, because I don't know where that path is going right now, I am a little sus of like, okay, what especially with something like this where you throw in these little things or how he is with Donald of like, all right, just get the fuck out of my office. And you're like, oh, it's oh, more aggressive than I'm used to. Yeah. I'm really curious to see how and like how they play with that character and what that character does. And if yeah. if if this revelation will is is in fact foreshadowing something that will happen in the future and how his interactions with Mark, how genuine they are or are not, you know, because I think up to this point, you're really being fed Oh, he's a good guy. He's a good guy. He takes care of Mark. He but takes care of Mark's really mother. Know. But I'm like, but what's the intent here? Right. What is his and true intention? I think they started off th this this uh, collection too with the Pentagon agency because you know it's not just straight Pentagon if Cecil's the person in charge. Right. Right. Uh, this agency, whatever we choose to call the Pentagon experimenting on super people yeah you know yeah which is real sus for sure because you you 
government agencies shouldn't be doing that kind of thing, which could be considered torture, which could be considered inhumane, regardless if they're superhuman or not. Yeah. And that's not what I expected from that agency, mm -hmm. because so far Cecil looks like he's had just the best interests of mm -hmm. his team members and the world in mind. And I think what makes the book interesting is I think it does such a good job tapping into the stuff that we love from all of these different like comic book universes. Yeah. Right. You know, it right. adds, it's just like layering it on, you know, it's like, we've got our Avengers, we've got our justice league, we've got our DC, our Marvel, we've got our X-Men. And like, to me, Cecil and this revelation, I'm like, this is very much like the government trying to capture mutants to experiment on them. And it, it like, it just adds like. more complex, uh, complexity and layers. And even though it's a very surprising revelation, there is that, sick part of me that's like i want to know more about this experimentation <laughs> what are we doing with these people how are what we going to take advantage of this yeah exactly, exactly. so is, is like, there anybody else who you're taking advantage exactly of? so like that revelation was really really fun and to see that like pre-donald there was this like pair who were leading all these experimentations and even cecil was like hey you know we we thought about getting rid of them but you know we never got around to it till now and like Right. Jesus, right. man. If you were this against it, wouldn't you put a little bit more attention on getting rid of these people? Like, well, that's another sus. Now look at what we have, though. We have some instances of, of Cecil kind of forgetting things because he forgot Mark underwater. And now he kind of <laughs> overlooked these, <laughs> right? We, and now he kind of overlooked these two scientists doing experiments on super people. Ding dong. Mm. Like what is what else does he have going on? Is there yeah. something else going on? Is mm. is he just does he just have too much on his plate? Hector, what, stop doing is, that. <laughs> why is he like this? You know, like, know. why is he why is he still like this? I don't know. We don't know. Uh, he may there may be some stuff up his sleeves, possibly. <laughs> um I want to talk about some of the uh some of the sort of personal lives of the characters, yeah. namely Brit and his wife, Jessica, mm -hmm. and then yeah. he has an ex-wife, Susan, and then Donald has uh, a, a wife that he's like estranged with or, or an ex or something, but mm -hmm. or he's with her, but they're trying to figure out their relationship. Also, Donald Jr. also goes to Reginald Vell Johnson High School, okay. which I was like, That's okay. Right. okay. So the whole time, <laughs> like when he goes to the school to have the meeting with the principal, yeah. uh -huh. I, I was like data banking and I'm going through like, have we met this character? Have we met this character? Has it has Invincible? Yeah. Has Mark interacted with him? I could not for the life of me figure it out. And I'm like, I feel like at this point we would have known, you know, like who this was. And I would have remembered Donald Jr. He looks just like him. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but I guess not. Right. <laughs> but you know, right. maybe Donald's kind of a nerd and ha hasn't yeah. crossed paths with. We haven't spent too much time with Mark socializing at high school, right? Right. You know, other than no. the sort of core characters in the in the story, yeah, but other than his straight friends, yeah. The other thing I wanted to do is provide a little bit of context. Robert Kirkman also wrote a book called Battle Pope, which you may see advertised in the back of some of these collections. Maybe mm -hmm. like, yeah, ba Battle Pope is actually in the back of this. The the two volumes of Battle Pope and. And there's some tech jacket and Walking Dead and stuff. Battle Pope is um, ridiculous. It's insane. <laughs> it's pure comedy. It's not trying to be real, real. It's not even really trying to say anything. I think it's just like a kind of a cheesecake book, a beefcake book. It's just the most ridiculous, you know, women with huge breasts. And the Pope is this overly muscled guy. And it's like yeah. just like a corny 90s action movie. And I think that Robert was doing some of that stuff earlier in his career and it was not the most sophisticated stuff, but I, what I just described, you either are like, that sounds like fun, or you're like, that's not for me. It, it wasn't like trying to go out of its way to be offensive. It was just kind of like, that's what the book was. I think a lot of that found its way into this early sort of conception of Brit. Because remember, mm -hmm. he did the first part, at least, before Invincible, and then kind of shifted focus, I think. Yeah. I think that some of the stuff in here on paper is like that fun, cheesy misogynistic like like okay his girlfriend's a stripper he's old she's young oh she's i mean like he makes a, the you know, comment he makes the he, yeah he makes like or she she actually makes the comment of like i forget exactly what she says but i was like i reading i'm like this wouldn't this is no, definitely uh, a product of its time mm, mm -hmm, <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. yeah when they're mm -hmm. and they're like having sex and it's the funny like jokey panels of him on top of her and then yeah. she goes oh by the way my parents want to meet you and he's like huh so it's like very sitcom <laughs> and corny yeah, yeah and yet i think that robert kirkman 
has, I think he realized that while doing this. And then by the end, I think maybe even, maybe I'm giving him too much credit because I like the guy. Okay, Robert, maybe you just did a dumb book with some (laughs) dumb choices back in the day. But he really, I think, tried to infuse it with a little bit more than just that by being like, well, we're going to meet her parents. We're going to to meet them with their relationship and understand that like he loves her. He wants to, he's yes. going to marry her and have a kid with her. Yeah. And she may be young. She may have quit law school to become a stripper. But like he kind of goes to bat for her when her dad like finds out and he's like, hey, you're just giving right. your daughter the, an excuse to not tell you stuff. It's like a very mature take for this guy who's older than the guy he's talking to, who's the dad of the woman that he's dating. So Absolutely. there's still a lot of like sitcom like cheesiness and corniness and and some misogynistic stuff in there but i think he is trying to make brit somebody who's like look i'm not a dumbass like let let's talk you know yeah. like yeah so I appreciate and that's what that. that's what i immediately gravitated to myself because i was afraid it was going to go into that creepy territory of just an old <laughs> dude with a young woman he does you know? make a joke about like you can't be too young well i mean i guess legally you got and right. i'm like you're right like, it's exactly. got to it's got to fall into that you know yeah, line of legal, legal i'm like oh whatever. my god yeah. Yeah. Right, i'm right, like right. terrible joke again we we've seen a couple bad jokes in invincible cuz this yeah. was 15 years ago yeah. i had to go yeah. back and like look at the publication <laughs> date i was like 2007 okay yeah okay i mean that's the comment, that, the comment yeah. that Sheen's are making is like, women get less attractive as they get older. And I'm like, this was definitely right. written by a man. Right. Oh, God. Mm-hmm. It was. It was. And, Augustine, the the book was put together in 07. The first issue of Brit, the first, you know, the first time this uh-huh. comes out, I think was like, geez, like, oh, 02 or something? No way. 2002? I think Even so. because that, because because huh? Because Invincible came out in 2000. Two or three, like the the comic book series, and I feel Yo, like he did this. I Brit. graduated high school in two thousand two. Man, I feel old. <laughs> I started high school in two thousand two. <laughs> oh, I yeah. feel even older. I'll now, have to Adam. double Thanks. check. But anyway, I'm sure people listening to this can either post in the comments below like what the history of Brit was and when the first issue came out and all that other thing. Regardless, yeah. regardless, the point irregardless. is irregardless. Irregardless, the point is the book is now a part of the larger Invincible universe. The focus on this paperback, even with some of those kind of cheesy tendencies, is the character of Brit. You really like the guy. You root for him. Even if he is superhumanly invulnerable to the point where even beyond Superman. But yeah. like, but did his nose bleed a little bit? I, you know, it, it's, what, what, does he have any weaknesses? We're going to find out. But, or maybe we won't. But <laughs> I'm really glad that we got to this tie-in. This is not yeah. the f- last tie-in we're going to read. There's a couple more, including eventually a great crossover between Invincible and Spider-Man. So look forward mm-hmm. to that. Look forward to that. because it's That's the business right there. That's the business. Yep. Uh, so give us some sort of final thoughts wrap up if you can adam let's start with you uh I, I, again love the book love learning more about the character brit love learning more about his world and the people that are directly affected by everything that's happening in his world it was nice to get an expansion of that universe to me invincible is like iron man and then brit is kind of like captain america or thor or whatever to, p- take your pick you know it's it's expanding <laughs> that world outward and because i i know that at some point we will see kind of these characters show up and cross and dip over into each other's books I love the fact that we got to take a little bit of time of like very invested in Mark's story, very invested in Omni Man's story and that whole family. But it's nice to take a little bit of like a breather, get to know the world a little bit better. And now, like, now we're going to dive back into Invincible. And I'm like, cool, I'm prepped and primed. Like, if Brit shows up, I have all this context and all this lore and knowledge. And I'm be like, I know you, son. I know what you're about. I know what <laughs> right, you've been through. Right. I'm here. I'm backing you up, man. If, wh- whatever happens. Yep. So yeah. it was now really, it was really, really excited to see him at any point. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And I think yeah. that's what's cool about spinoff books that do such a good job telling a character's story is. When you see them again, you feel really well informed, and you root for them. Hopefully, if they're the hero. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it was it was a really great read, and I'm, and I'm glad we did it. So thank you, Hector. Augustine, overall <laughs> thoughts. <laughs> overall thoughts. Brit is a cool character, much cooler. Once again, I judged the book by its cover. <laughs> I just saw an old guy in army fatigues, and I was like, okay, what are we gonna do? His name's Brit, like Captain Brit. What is he like? British? I don't know. Uh, end up loving Brit, Brittany, Mr. Brittany. I don't know what your last name, Mr. Brittany, but thank you. Um, we, I end up loving this character, but I also love that Kirkman takes the risk and does this and expands the universe and keeps the writing so consistent and, and gives us like the tie-in is perfect. It's not overwhelmed by the initial storyline, yeah, yeah. but it does give you the context to that initial storyline. So now if you go read it again, you're like, 
Of course, that's Kid Fusion. Of course, that's that's you know what happened in Brit. It's awesome, and it's only enriching the rest of the universe at this point. That honestly, I didn't think it could get any better. But these tie-ins, if they keep going, doing this, it, this I mean, th- this universe could contend with anything in the MCU, anything in the DCU. This is yeah. is going to be awesome to see in the animated oh, series. Man. I can't. I hope Brit makes it. I hope yeah. Brit makes it into the animated show. It's so oh. come on. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. I think well, I was say, I, I hope Brit makes it through the rest of the comic book series. I'm like, ah, oh, damn it, Hector, come on. No, no, no. <laughs> as of right now, as of right now, everybody you know is alive is alive. Yeah. As of right now. I'm not going to tell you who mm-hmm. will meet an end, tragic or otherwise. Also, Adam, I'm going to continue editing these videos because... If you do Google searches for images for yeah. this comic book, you're going to get it spoiled for you. That's exactly. true. So, true. Exactly. Yeah, so no more editing these videos for you. <laughs> I'm going to take over. Okay. Well, g- guys, I couldn't have said it better than the what you just both said about Brit. I'm so, so stoked that we read it. And I'm even more excited to get back to Invincible, which is what we're reading next. Invincible Volume 5 is up next. It's on my shelf. I don't know what the name of vol- the volume is, but it <laughs> is... Yeah, whatever. Here's but the cover. Is, there it is. <laughs> oh, it's Invincible Volume 5. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> another sitcom title. All right. So read that, and we'll see you guys in a week. And thank you again so much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe the video. And if you like more comic book stuff, let us know below in the comments. Tell your friends about it. Get them into Invincible. Read along with us. Start from the beginning. Check out Brit. Be stoked about the Amazon animated series that's coming out. Uh, Join our Discord so we can keep the conversation going. There's a great Invincible group there talking about the book, which is awesome, awesome, awesome. Those are our core readers, and we love you. Yes. We love you guys. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.